After devastating hurricanes, the Gulf of Mexico became an underwater graveyard, littered with 3,000 metric tons sunken oil platforms. Lifting them was considered impossible. Conventional cranes couldn't handle the unstable loads or the immense seabed suction, and sending divers to cut them apart is one of the most lethal jobs on Earth. The industry needed a new solution. So they built one, a 122-foot-tall, 1,000-metric-ton submersible grappling device capable of lifting 4,000 metric tons from the deep, retrieving an entire 3,000-ton topside in a single lift. They call it the CLAW. The CLAW is, more accurately, a pair of massive gantry-suspended grappling devices. These are not simple hooks. They are fully articulated, submersible machines. Each one stands 122 feet tall and weighs 1,000 metric tons. They are engineered with massive, hydraulically actuated tines, designed to work in tandem. Together, they can reach depths of 350 feet, grab, secure, and lift a combined 4,000 metric tons of mangled, unstable wreckage. They are, in essence, the articulated hands of a deep-sea giant. But a tool this massive cannot hang from just any vessel. These claws are the specialized attachments for one of the most unique and powerful heavy lift vessels ever constructed. The Versabar VB-10,000. This machine shatters the mold of a traditional crane ship. It is a colossal catamaran, built from two 300-foot-long, 72-foot-wide barges. This twin-hull design is the secret to its power. A conventional derrick barge lifts from a single point on a monohull, making it dangerously vulnerable to load shifts and ocean swells. The VB-10,000 distributes its load across two separate, widely spaced points of buoyancy, giving it a level of stability that is simply impossible for a traditional crane. Spanning between these two hulls are two massive, 240-foot-tall steel arch gantries. These arches are the backbone of the system. From these gantries, the VB-10,000's four main heavy lift blocks, working in perfect synchronization, give the vessel a total unadulterated lift capacity of 7,500 metric tons. This entire superstructure is not welded solid to the barges. It is connected by a series of patented articulated pins. This is a critical, ingenious design feature. These pins act like a gimbal, decoupling the gantry superstructure from the motion of the barges. As the hulls pitch and roll in a moderate sea, the pins absorb that movement, allowing the gantries, and more importantly, the multi-thousand-ton load, to remain stable and isolated from the ocean's forces. A vessel this size, performing such a delicate operation, cannot be held in place by anchors. Anchors are imprecise and would be impossible to manage in a subsea debris field. Instead, the VB-10,000 is held in its exact position by eight 1,000-horsepower azimuthing thrusters, four mounted to each barge. This propulsion system is managed by a DP-3-class dynamic positioning system. For those in the marine industry, that DP-3 rating is the gold standard of reliability. It is not just a high-tech cruise control. A DP-3 classification means the vessel has unparalleled redundancy. It has multiple independent engine rooms, multiple segregated switchboards and control systems, and backups for every critical component. A DP-3-class system is designed to suffer a catastrophic failure in one section, like a fire or a flood, and still maintain its exact position. It can hold the VB-10,000 plus or minus a few feet over a target in the open ocean for weeks on end. This $100 million system of steel, hydraulics, and raw power is a marvel of engineering. But what kind of disaster could possibly justify the need for such a behemoth? To truly understand why a machine like the Claw needs to exist, you have to understand the terrifying physics of the deep sea. 
It is an environment that is actively trying to destroy everything in it. The post-hurricane Gulf of Mexico was the perfect storm of engineering challenges. Hundreds of oil and gas platforms were toppled or damaged, scattered across the seabed. They were mangled, submerged in darkness, and pinned by forces that are difficult to comprehend. When a 3,000 metric ton platform sinks, it isn't just sitting on the ocean floor. It is pinned by two invisible, immensely powerful enemies. First, there is the simple, crushing hydrostatic pressure. At 350 feet down, the water exerts over 150 pounds of force on every single square inch. On the massive, flat surfaces of a platform topside, this adds up to millions of pounds of force. Second, and far more dangerous, is seabed suction. Over months and years, the immense weight of the platform presses it deep into the ocean floor mud, squeezing out every drop of water and creating a powerful, perfect vacuum. This suction grip is so strong that the force required to break the platform free can be significantly greater than the actual weight of the platform itself. This creates the most feared phenomenon in all of heavy lifting the snap load. A conventional derrick barge attempting this lift is in a constant, terrifying battle. The crane operator slowly applies tension. The crane vessel lists, its hull groaning under the strain as it pulls against both the 3,000 metric ton wreck and the unknown 1,000 ton grip of the suction. Then, the suction breaks. In a single instant, that extra 1,000 tons of resistance vanishes. The 3,000 metric ton load is instantaneously and violently transferred to the crane hook, sending a shockwave, a snap load, through the rigging that can destroy sheaves, snap cables, and in a catastrophic failure, has the potential to topple the entire crane vessel. For decades, the only way to avoid this was to not lift the platform at all. The only solution was to send in the divers. This meant deploying teams of saturation divers, men who live in a pressurized helium-oxygen environment on a dive support vessel for 28 days at a time. They are transferred in a cramped diving bell, lowered hundreds of feet into the pitch black, near freezing water. Their job is to walk onto that mangled wreckage, in zero visibility, and with underwater torches, cut the 3,000 metric ton giant into small, manageable 500 ton pieces. It is one of the most dangerous jobs on the planet. The divers face the constant threat of equipment failure, but the true, silent killer is the invisible force of differential pressure, or delta P. A small crack in a submerged pipe or vessel, common in a wreck, can create a current of water moving with thousands of pounds of force. If a diver gets too close, that current will grab them and pull them into an opening from which there is no escape. It is a constant, lethal hazard in a workplace with no light and no second chances. This process was brutally slow, astronomically expensive, and incredibly high risk. The industry didn't just need a bigger hook, it needed a new philosophy. It needed a way to get the divers out of the water. When you consider those lethal, invisible forces, what do you think it must have felt like to be that diver, knowing that a single wrong move was your last? The claw was Versabar's answer. Its primary mission is the decommissioning of those toppled platforms in the Gulf of Mexico, and its operation is a masterclass in controlled, overwhelming force. The VB-10,000 glides into position over the sunken wreckage, its DP-3 thrusters humming as they hold it perfectly stationary above the target. Guided by a team of remote-operated vehicles, or ROVs, the two 1,000 metric ton grapples are lowered, descending hundreds of feet into the darkness, their floodlights cutting through the silt. The ROV pilots, safe in their control room on the vessel, act as the eyes for the crane operator. They are the surgeons, guiding the massive steel tines to encircle the mangled steel of the platform's topside. The tines lock. The hydraulic systems confirm the grip. 
the ROVs back away to a safe distance, and the VB-10,000 begins its pull. The custom-engineered 400-ton hydraulic winches, fed by thousands of feet of 3.5-inch steel rope, bring all 7,500 metric tons of lift capacity to bear. There is a moment of immense, silent strain as the vessel fights the seabed suction. But the VB-10,000 stable catamaran design and raw power are built for this. It does not list, it does not strain. It simply pulls. With a force that overcomes the vacuum of the ocean floor, the entire 300 metric ton structure is ripped free. Water cascades from its decks as it breaks the surface, a steel leviathan brought back from the deep. A transport barge then simply slides into the 160-foot gap between the VB-10,000's twin hulls. The claw opens, and the job is done. A nightmare operation that once took a team of saturation divers six months is completed, from start to finish, in a single day. This is the power and reputation that was summoned to St. Simon's Sound, Georgia, in 2019. But the MV Golden Ray presented a totally different challenge. The 71,000-ton, 656-foot-long car carrier was too large to be grabbed by the claw, and it was lying on the surface. The salvage required a different kind of brute force. So engineers adapted the entire VB-10,000 system. The vessel straddled the wreck like a predator, but instead of the claws, its gantries were rigged with a 400-foot-long cutting chain, a monstrous piece of rigging with hardened steel teeth. For two years, the vessel's massive lift blocks pulled that chain, link by link, through the ship's reinforced hull. It was the industrial equivalent of a wire saw, powered by a 7,500 metric ton engine. The process was a grueling two-year battle. The chain broke. Fires sparked deep inside the hull as the chain tore through crushed cars and engine blocks. But the VB-10,000 never moved. It held its ground, pulling with relentless force 24 hours a day. It made eight massive cuts, slicing the Golden Ray into sections weighing up to 4,100 metric tons apiece. Then, its main blocks would lift each section, dripping with mangled vehicles, and place it on a barge. It was the largest and perhaps most complex salvage operation in United States history. And it was only possible because a machine built to lift giants from the seafloor was versatile enough to tear one apart from the surface. This machine has proven no wreck is too big and no depth too great. But it makes you wonder what other colossal industrial challenges are still lying in wait in the deep. The VB-10,000 and its claw system are more than just a big crane. They are a fundamental shift in marine salvage, a machine that replaces high-risk dive teams with pure, unparalleled lifting power. It proves that for even the most complex engineering problems, there is always a solution. It just might not look like anything you expected. Thanks for watching Hard Hat Industries, your source for serious machines doing real work. If you like this, hit like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss what's next. Until then, keep your head down and your gear running.